Hello everyone, my name is Heather. Welcome or welcome back to the channel. So today I'm going to be answering some questions about my job. I'm a clinical laboratory technologist. A little background on me. I work in a cytogenetics fish lab, fish standing for fluorescence in situ hybridization. And I've been working this job for the past three years. This is my first job out of college. I put out a work week in the life vlog a few weeks ago and I asked you guys to drop in some questions if you had any. So I will be answering those questions today. I guess I'll give you a little bit of background on my education. So I have a four year university bachelor's degree in biology with a focus in evolution, ecology, and animal behavior. And then I do have a master's degree in plant pathology. The job I have now does not require my master's degree. So um, that's just like a little background for me. A little bit of a disclaimer, I'm answering these questions to the best of my ability and knowledge. If I do miss something, just like correct me, <laughs> I guess. So yeah, let's get started. Do you need a degree to be a lab tech and what kind? So in order to be a clinical laboratory technologist, you do need a four year bachelor degree. And most places do require you to have the MLS certification, which stands for Medical Laboratory Scientist certification. And that certification is through the ACSP, which is the American Society of Clinical Pathology. So yeah, you can get a job without the MLS certification like me, I'm like exhibit A over here, but it does make it a lot easier if you do have the certification, but it's just not, it's not impossible. Is there a difference between MLS and MT? So yes, like I said, MLS, the Medical Laboratory Scientist Certification, that is gonna be your four-year degree. And then the MT, which stands for Medical Technician, that is gonna be your two-year associate's degree. So the difference when you're looking for jobs, you wanna focus on whether it's a technologist, which is four-year, or a technician which is two years. So technologist four year, technician is two years. So that will help you a little bit when you're looking for jobs. If I don't have an MLS certification, but have a science or biology bachelor's degree, what jobs can I get? So like I said before, you may be able to get a clinical lab laboratory technologist job, but it also just depends on the state you're living in. I know Florida specifically does require the MLS certification, but like I live in Minnesota and it kind of just depends on the hospital or the company. But if you don't want to go the like hospital, like clinical route, you also could look into biotechnology jobs. Those are going to be jobs like Roche, LabCorp, um, I can't think of others off the top of my ha head, but like companies like 23andMe possibly, but other jobs you may be able to get is in microbiology because microbiology isn't always necessarily clinical and that goes for like every science, you know what I mean? But then you can also look for food science jobs, embryology jobs, which is like working in a fertility clinic, doing IVF. That doesn't require an MLS. And then also forensic science. So I love listening to Crime Junkie and Morbid and like Up and Vanish, like all those like crime murder podcasts. So for a little bit there, I was like, dang, it would be cool to be a forensic scientist. Like that would be dope just to like help solve crimes. <laughs> How do you get into the research side of things? So my lab, we, most of us are like clinical lab techs, but we also have a few developmental technologists. So that's going to be a role that is doing research and development within our lab to help us and like help our processes. So if you are looking for a job, there are going to be research jobs within the clinical realm, but you might I guess it de depends what kind of research you want to do. So when you're looking for jobs, my advice to you would be to just go as specific as possible. Like if you're interested in cancer, if you're interested in like Parkinson's disease or like whatever, type in those specific keywords and then development technologist or research technologist. Like that's what I would do. But yeah, you can definitely get a research position within a clinical lab, but you might have a better opportunity within like a university or like a biotech company. How is the schedule? Do you always work the same shifts? 
So my schedule currently is a set shift. I work Monday through Thursday, 3 p.m. to 1.30 a.m. And then every sixth weekend, I have to do a weekend rotation. However, my lab is super chill and we're able to get other people to work those shifts or if we wanna take someone else's weekend shift, we can take we can take theirs as well. So yeah, so I do have the 10 hour shifts and then the three day weekends are really nice. But saying that, if you do go into the medical field, expect to work weekends. But yeah, there's some people on my floor, they work like Tuesday through Friday or Wednesday through Saturday, something like that. A normal Monday through Friday eight to five shift is definitely an option. Like there are gonna be places that have a regular day shift scheduled as well. But there are also like overnight shifts you can do. When it was peak COVID, I got sent to work out in the COVID lab doing like testing and my shift was awful. I only had to do it for like three months, but the shift itself, it was Friday to Tuesday and the hours were 11 p.m. to 7.30 a.m. So it was the midnight shift, but like my Monday was Friday <laughs> and I had a roommate at the time and I remember like she was like having people over on a Friday night and I mean, even though you're not supposed to do that during COVID, but whatever, but she would like have friends over and like they were drinking and I'm just like over here, like I gotta go to work. So yeah, that was kind of depressing. But when you apply for jobs, just make sure it doesn't say like overnight shift on weekends. <laughs> but okay, on to the next. Is it easy to get time off to travel? I am interested in this career, but travel a lot and I love the flexibility that waitressing offers. Okay, so as I was editing this video, I decided I did not like my answer that I gave you guys. So I have a better answer and whoever wrote me this question, boy, do I have the answer for you. And the answer is travel MLS. Get your MLS certification and then be a travel MLS. MLS. It's like travel nursing like you hear about travel nursing all the time and it pays really nicely i will literally search jobs right now there's some jobs up to three thousand nine hundred dollars per week yeah so usually you have like a 13 week assignment and then you can extend but you're getting paid like four grand a week why wouldn't you do that <laughs> i wish i could do that but yes Get your MLS, like be a travel MLS. And then also, if you want, you can take breaks in between assignments. And like you could take a month or two off if you just like save your money properly. And then you have a month or two off to travel. Other than the travel MLS, most medical fields do offer pretty good PTO. Like I think I get like 26 days of PTO. So that's like a month roughly. It's still really good, especially with my three day schedule. I can just take one day off and have a four day weekend. And I've done plenty of trips where I fly out on a Thursday and then fly back Sunday or Monday. And it's like a perfect long weekend. So yeah, there are plenty of opportunities to travel while working as a clinical lab tech. Do you regret being in the field? I try to live a life with no regrets. I don't regret being in the field. I really learned a lot so far and I really have enjoyed my job and it was, it was super cool to be able to work in the COVID lab even though I just complained about it. <laughs> it was cool knowing I was helping people directly. During the pandemic, this cat, Finny, say hi. <laughs> But yeah, being a clinical lab tech is nice because you can work in a lab for like two years and if you're kind of sick of it, you could easily jump into a different lab doing completely different work and you might find more fulfillment in that. It's easy to like jump around. But yes, I do not regret being in the field at all. Would you have wanted to study something else? So again, no regrets. However, knowing what I know now in this stage of my life, I did go and I got a master's degree and that ended up being free and I had no idea what I was doing with, with my life. So that's why I did it. Knowing what I know now, I would have just gone straight into getting my MLS certification just so I have that under my belt. So then I would have more flexibility. So then I could do travel MLS. Or I actually did learn about, there's a master's program called genetic counseling. That's super interesting. And then also pathologist assistants. I toured where the pathologist assistants work at my job and it was so cool. And like, I literally didn't know that that career path existed. So 
If I could go back a few years, I think I would have either done my MLS or pathologist assistant, but whatever. And I'm too lazy. I don't want to go back to school now. So here we are. <laughs> here we are trying to get famous on YouTube <laughs> instead. Oh, also with studying something else, I wish I would have taken like more art classes, like photography classes in college, and then also like marketing business classes just because it would go hand in hand with YouTube and because I really enjoy YouTube as well. So that is one thing, like if you are in college and you have your heart set on clinical laboratory technology or science, but have a little bit of interest in the arts or like anything else, like take a class, like just do it. Do you feel like it's worth being a clinical laboratory technologist? Ooh, you guys coming in with the deep questions over here. Okay, so worth. Let's define worth. So I will define worth with money and fulfillment. So money wise, the job I got was a great job post college. My first job out of college, which is the one I'm working now, I think I started at like 65,000 and now I'm like up a, a couple more thousand after being here for three years. 65K living in like not that expensive of a city is like pretty nice. But yeah, so money wise, it's good. However, I would not want to stay at my specific job for the rest of my life because there is like a cap. And I don't know, like that is one thing with clinical laboratory technology. If you stay in just the tech role, I don't think you'll be making more than 100K. Like you're definitely gonna want to move up in the business you're working for if you do wanna make more money than that. Maybe unless you just wanna do like a lot of overtime but we don't want to be working all of our lives, you guys. We want to enjoy our lives too. So yes, money-wise, I would say it's worth being a clinical laboratory technologist, especially in your younger years. And then as you gain experience, you figure it out and you make more money. Fulfillment-wise, I do find fulfillment in my job. I like learning about it and I like knowing that I'm helping patients. However, the job I do, I feel like it does get a little bit repetitive sometimes. So toward the end of the week, I'm pretty burnt out. Not like burnt burnt out, but I'm just like over my job and ready to go home. But yeah, so like fulfillment wise, not every week I get burnt out. That makes this job sound bad. I feel like you get burnt out from every job, like unless you just love your job like that much. Like I love my job, but not like, I'm not, I don't want to marry it. You know what I mean? <laughs> Definitely doing it for the money. Okay, I'm rambling. I don't know if that answered your question, but yeah, I like it. It's, it may, it's fulfilling enough, okay? <laughs> okay, so my last question is, are you staying in the field? This question refers to what I said in my work week vlog. I mentioned that I got a new job. <laughs> so I haven't really announced it on any other social media yet. I guess if you're watching this video and you don't know already, you will be the, fir the first to know that I accepted a job as an embryologist and I'm moving to Houston, Texas to do that. So yes, I am so excited. Like I mentioned before, the embryology, that was kind of my little hint at the beginning of the video, um, talking about jobs. If you don't have your MLS, you can go into this field. So yes, I'm going into embryology. I'm beyond excited. I am just, I think the science is so cool. And to be able to be making babies for people, like helping people have families, I'm, it's, I'm beyond excited. So yes, that is my new endeavor. And I will probably be like vlogging a little bit about that. So if you're interested in embryology or learning more about embryology with me as I learn, <laughs> subscribe. <laughs> so yeah, and also some Houston content as well. I actually have a whole another list of questions, but this video is already pretty long. So I think I'm going to end this video here and film another video answering questions more about the medical laboratory science certification program, how it is and like all, like how much it costs, like all things about it. So if you're interested in that, stay tuned, but yes. Um, okay. So thank you guys for watching the video. I will see you in the next one. Have a good day. Bye.